So in this final video this month of self-care month on self-compassion, um, today I'm speaking about the traps that we can fall into that prevent us from treating ourselves with self-compassion. I'm speaking here about not feeling good enough, uh, the trap of perfectionism, and also the trap of comparing ourselves with other people. <clears throat> so let's just think about this. If you had a friend who always criticized you, put yourself down, um, never boosted you, uh, made sure that you were very aware of all your failings and your mistakes and pointed them out to you. In other words, a friend who kept on breaking you down, would that relationship last? When we would leave a friend like that, how would we be feeling? Certainly not happy. We'd probably be feeling quite heavy. We'd be feeling disappointed. We'd be feeling not good enough. Um, how would it be rather, if we think about the friends we do cherish, they treat us with positivity, they boost us, they encourage us, they make us feel that we are worthy people. And, um, and so those relationships are therefore more likely to last, the friends that we, tr that we cherish. So let me ask you, when you're treating yourself are you that first friend who beats yourself up, who's aware of all the mistakes and failings, never boosts yourself, always makes you aware of all your errors? Or are you that second friend who would cherish you, who would encourage you, who would be kind to you? And I'm sure the answer in most cases is we're not that second friend. We're that first friend to ourselves. We don't treat ourselves with self-compassion. So we need to be aware of how we are speaking to ourselves. What is the language that we are using um, when we are going about our everyday business? So trap number one is that we don't feel good enough. And we speak to ourselves then in a very bad way. I just want to ask, um, really I, I think what I'm speaking about is that we are expecting ourselves to be perfect. But we don't expect our friends to be perfect. We quite accept them and their imperfections. So I challenge you not to have the double standards of treating our friends with generosity and kindness and care and, care and compassion and yet treating ourselves by beating ourselves up. Let's not have those double standards. Let's see if we can treat ourselves the same way that we treat our friends. Do you think that's possible? Do you think you'd be able to appreciate the good in you and let go of the bad exactly as we do to our other friends. Are we able to do that? So that's my challenge, my first challenge to you. So another one of the, the traps that we fall into other than not feeling good enough and they're very closely linked is the whole idea that we need to be perfect. Is there such a thing? Ab absolutely not. So we are trying to uh, be a, a, a person and it's not achievable. So if it's not achievable, we are always going to be criticizing ourselves. So that whole trap of perfectionism, and I do speak about it a lot in other videos, the toxic trap of perfectionism is something that's got to go. We can't be perfect. We never will be perfect. So we need to be able to change the way we are evaluating ourselves. Um, in other words, can we maybe be happy with 80%, even 70% and not 100%? Can we be? Can we strive for excellence rather than perfection? These are all questions that will help you to rise above your perfectionism actually and treat yourself with compassion. So. 
Let us try and treat ourselves as we would treat others. Kindness, care, cutting them some slack, not expecting them to be absolutely perfect. Does that make sense? Okay, and the third trap that we fall into is a really another toxic trap, which is comparing ourselves with others. And of course, this opens ourselves hugely up to showing that we don't stack up, we're not good enough, uh, we beat ourselves up because there's no ways we are going to be as beautiful, as thin, as rich, as successful as other people in the world. And I think one of the first things to know is that there are always going to be people who are better than us and people that are maybe not as good as us in certain things. That's the way it is. If we are always trying to compare, just to remember there's only one person who will compare themselves with the rest of the world and will come up trumps. And that is the one person who is the best in the world. The rest of us are all going to come up short. So if we compare, we are generally going to open ourselves to beat ourselves up again. So in comparing ourselves, what we are doing is we are allowing other people to, defer, to, to define our own self-worth. Let's not give them that power. According to Theodore Roosevelt, and I think this is such a wonderful quote, he says that comparison is the thief of joy. Okay, comparison then is all about the shoulds that we are having in our life. We should be thinner, we should be richer, we should be more successful, we should be happier, we should be, and the list goes on. I want to challenge you to take the shoulds out of your life and instead make it the I want to. So just listen to the difference in, uh, in this statement, these two sentences. I should be more successful. How does that make you feel? As opposed to, I want to be successful. Makes you feel very different, hey? So let's replace the shoulds with the I want to's. So there are two types of ca comparisons that, that can be healthy, and I, I would be remiss of me if I didn't mention them. Um, so the first one is if you are comparing yourself to somebody else and it's going to motivate you to strive to be better, then that comparison is fine because you're using them as like a, a light that you're wanting to move towards. Uh, the, the second type of comparison that is um, healthy is called a temporal comparison. And that is when you compare who you are today with who you were yesterday and maybe last week and last month and permanently hold yourself accountable to be improving who you are. So those are the two types of comparison that are acceptable and healthy. Most comparisons though leave us feeling lesser than. They, they, ma they make us feel that we're not, not good enough. Um, so Anne Foskamp, um, her quote I think is also very relevant. She says that comparison is a thug that robs your joy. But it's even more than that. Comparison makes you a thug who beats down somebody. And that is yourself and your soul. So let's not compare ourselves with other people. Let's champion ourselves and champion others. After all, the one thing that you can be really good at is being yourself. So that's the challenge. So in conclusion, don't fall into the traps that stop us from being kind and compassionate with ourselves. The traps of not feeling good enough. The toxic trap of perfectionism and of comparing ourselves. I want to challenge you to treat yourself as you would treat a cherished friend. Don't compare with others. Let's not break down. Let's rather build up. Let's live with gratitude for all that we can do, all that we have, and all that we are. 
I hope you found this video valuable. If you would like to contact me, please feel free to do so, uh, either on Facebook, in, in Messenger, on Instagram, uh, on LinkedIn, or on um, my email, which is sherryforsyth at gmail.com.